Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. As you might know by now that Arnold has released its public beta for the GPU rendering and you can see it's very nice looking, it seems to be very fast and as expected I will do a hands-on demo and a hands-on video just starting today. Um, I have been testing it for a while now and it seems very robust and super fast and even now with these, lim these new updates it's getting a lot better and it's really fun to use. So uh, let's just head back in Maya and let's get cooking and get something to render. So I'm now in Maya 19 with Arnold GPU installed. You can go to the about section, just see which version I'm using. I'm using the 3.20 M2A version with the new core 5.30. And before you get rendering, there is a guide on their website just to see what you can and cannot do, what versions you need to have for your NVIDIA drivers. And they make it really clear that Arnold is not ready for use in production. You can test it, play with it, but there is no proper support if anything should go wrong when you are in production scenario or environments. So um, here's a few um, updates to that whole 3.2 release and a very big thing I must say is the smart opaque mode which now detects um, if you have transparency in the shade, it will automatically enable the opaque switch for you. I'm not sure if you will really see it in the interface of Maya, but at render times, it should happen, happen in the as file generation. So it should be done at render times. You can now visualize lights. Um, as you can see, you can see the area light in the render directly. And there are lots of other things to look at. So it's a very great update. So I have a little scene prepared. It's like a little cake scene. We were out this uh, this last weekend and we went to a pretty nice place and they had a dessert uh, menu and we got a pretty nice cake. So I'm just trying to replicate that. Obviously, I'm trying it all procedurally. So uh, bear in mind that this will not be photo real. Um, I have a little scene prepared. So I modeled all these things um, as you can see it's very basic so a very basic scene i modeled this stuff very basic and maya just like i, I would not never call myself a modeler so but i i could replicate something let me just show you the reference and uh this is kind of what i'm going for i have a little a few more images like reference images from different angles so this is kind of what i was going for just playing around just testing the new uh the gpu version so this is what i have and i went actually to zbrush i don't have it open but i sculpted a few displacement maps and exported them so um, you will be able to get all this stuff you get this little models they, ha they have been UV'd, but it's like the auto re UVing in, uh, in ZBrush, so you have something, it, it might not be the best, but um, you've got UV, so all this is, um, you can play with that, all this is exported or available on my Patreon channel, so if you are in this source file tier, you can get access to all of this, you get the displacement maps, you get all the models, my reference images, and I actually have quite a few uh, images, I have like these references if you want to play with that. And I also have the, like a mint leaf, which I don't have yet, so we can actually place that if we want to. But for now, this is what we got. Uh, this was our finish, so you can see I just placed it for you to get kind of a scale reference, so I know how large an iPhone is, right? So I just kind of measured it to that scale. As you can see, my techniques, nothing really crazy, just something to get going. So um, I have my C now saved, and... The first thing I guess what we want to do is just bring in a light. So I just uh, will load in a Skydome light and choose a very basic studio environment. It, it will not be the same as um, the reference images because I actually did not shoot something right there. Um, but I will just load up that HDRI and then um, make sure that I have the correct render settings. And then we are ready to start some look devving on the new Arnold GPU release. So loading in the map and going to the render settings. What I like to do, I have my little preset here. Uh, I think good is the one. So I'm just disabling quite a few things. I don't like the auto convert. I don't like the um, the rendering of the swatches and all that. So a few things disabled. Right now we are in CPU. So let's just uh, select all of these guys and assign a standard surface shader. Hit S, uh, Control S to save, and let's just render that. It may, the first startup time for the GPU might take a bit, so let's just first switch that mode over and 
enable that, open up the Arnold render view, test render, hit play, I guess. And now this scene will be uh, starting to convert for the GPU. And there you go. This is now fully rendered on Arnold GPU. You can see in the render settings what kind of card I have, Quadro P5000. So it's a pretty decent card actually. So it will run very smoothly on this machine here. And you can see it's very fast. It works pretty cool. And now let's just uh, make our thrust them correct so I can see what I'm clipping off and whatnot. And you can see now pretty cool stuff. And what I like to do though is even though we're on the GPU, I like to do in a test resolution environment. So it's just a tiny bit more snappy and it's, it's just nicer to work. A uh, thing to keep in mind is that the GPU does not have any indirect stuff. So all this is disabled. That is correct. So the GPU only uses AA samples. So you can go crazy like 20 or even higher. And it will just take a while to resolve for that resolution. If I region click here, even that is a lot faster. You can see it, it starts resolving and it gets clean very quickly. Another cool thing is you can actually render in the viewport and that has been there for a few versions but you can just click render and hit Arnold here you get this little floating menu hit play and the scene should converge in the viewport as well and you can see that is happening so a good tip in the viewport is to go to the show menu and disable selection highlighting so now when I rotate in the viewport and I select my objects I don't get any um, selections in there which is very nice and very convenient um, all right, so I guess we are ready to start some shading and uh, let's just maybe start with that little ice cream. So I'm selecting that. You cannot see it in the viewport as I said before, um, but it is selected. You can see it in my in the attribute editor. So I'm just moving this over. So this is currently our base shader. So I'm selecting the uh, ice again, right clicking that assign new material AI standard surface. And I will just frame that material. So now I'm working with this little shader there. And if I change the base, you should see it updating there. And it's happening very fast and very smoothly. Another thing you can do then is you do region select. So let's just click that region. And now we're only rendering in that little region. I can drag the region. And if you want to move it, I just found this out yesterday actually. Um, you don't need to move this and move that to move it. Actually, you can click these thinner lines which highlight orange and then you can freely move that viewing window. So now let's just work on that little ice thingy and maybe make this a little bit larger. And let's just try to do a scatter sh shader. First I am disabling the grid. Okay, so in the shader, I'm heading over to, uh, I'm just fully ignoring the base, just close that down, go to subsurface and enable the weight. So now you should see it's getting very translucent and you will notice there's a new random walk V2, which is a lot more detailed in very thin areas. So if you have like paper thin objects or just objects which have lots of crevices or thinner parts, use that. It's a bit uh, more optimized and a bit more accurate as well. So let's just try preset maybe. Let's go for skim milk. And we can see it's very blue and it's weird. So let's just reduce our overall scene scale maybe, maybe by a factor of 10. And you can see stuff has changed. Um, we want a bit more yellowish eyes or whatever, and we want some cream. So we want definitely want to reduce this radius. It's currently on one, which is very high based on that scene scale. So I'm just moving that down. And the further I move it down, the more solid our um, ice cream gets, or right now it's cream. So we can reduce our saturation for the main uh, color, maybe 0.2, so it gets a bit wider. And then we can have a more yellowish um, scatter color instead. So now you can see whenever it's scattering, it gets a bit more yellowish, which is and which might be a cool behavior. So you can see now it's slowly um, cleaning up that um, the render, and you can see now it looks very see-through, very white compared to all the other shaders. Uh, but that's currently what we were going for. So next step is actually to load in the displacement map, which I have created. So in that little folder under ZBrush, I have these maps exported and there's one called Ice Cream. I guess it's that one, so I'm just dropping that in. And if I hook this up to my ID channels and I'll just do, um, I just view the selection of that. I can open up the debug shading menu like that and I can just enable isolate selected, hit that and now you can see that it's very black, but the ZBrush maps are very black just because they work on a zero um, level. So I think we should be good. 
if we just create a displacement shader like that, hook up our red channel, which is just a luminance value of that, and plug the displacement into our displacement shader, we should hopefully see something updating here. If I remove isolate, select it, and maybe just view the basic one, you can now see that we get this displacement map working as expected. We can bring like boost it up if you want to, maybe a value of two, and you can see it gets a lot more um, broken up. And because I exported the map with, I think, three displacement uh, subdivisions, we would need to do the same in the Arnold tab, go to subdivision and make sure we change our mode to Cat Clark. And then we can maybe go up to three iterations, which will subdivide that. And this is now our result of that. So now if we boost our scale to two, we should see a more accurate representation of what I sculpted. Obviously, it's not the masterpiece, but it is. it has some detail to it. So back to the shader, um, we should su now see a lot more like um, br break up everywhere. Just see a more interesting render. And that's kind of the, the beauty of this. You can just sculpt quickly something and see the result almost in real time, right? You can see now the breakup on my specular and all that. So if you want to have a more frozen look to this or um, more like if you want to go more for, for, for cream, you would need to add a more frequency displacement map and all that. But I just want to show you how to quickly get going on, on the GPU side. So let's just move our uh, view window here to this wafer thing select it. It's supposed to be like a little chocolate cracker or something like that. So r clicking that, assign you standard surface shader, framing that and ignoring the base totally again, just go over to the scattering part, enable this and go for a more brownish look, more saturation for sure. A lot darker, maybe something more towards that color change our mode to V2, scale to maybe 0.1, and now just reduce the radius and change it to be a, a more saturated color, something like that. So now you can see um, we get that kind of scattery look. If I rotate to the other side, you should see there is a bit, bit of scattering going on now can see these thinner parts get more light through. And now let's hook up the displacement map we have for this as well. So um, it lives in the same, it's called wafer. Not the best name, but I think it will work. Displacement shader, same thing, hook the red channel to the displacement, hook that up to the displacement tab. No, it should have get, gotten, gotten displacement, get a bit more detail on this can see now we get these little dents everywhere. So let's just also subdivide this uh, maybe just three times. And now we should see a bit more detail. We can try to just uh, re restart the render and see if we get better um, subdivisions, which might help actually. So now that's a subdivided mesh. If you check the basic mode, this is what we get. So nothing really crazy, just a, a bit more breakup. And what you can do, you can just multiply this with a maybe, let's just create a procedural noise quickly, like a cell noise, for instance, hook that up into our ID, do isolate selected on that, uh, change the mode to Wally, maybe add more octaves to this, get more detail, change the scale maybe to five, like that. So we get a, like, these little patterns. And what we can do now, uh, we can just mix this in slightly. So right now uh, we are working from uh, zero to one in this. Uh, the Z displacement is from minus one to plus one, I guess. We can now just slowly just mix it in if we want to. So let's just do that with a, um, I think it's called AI multiply for instance. So what, let's just maybe do an add so we'll just adding these this on top. So we would need to remap this obviously. So let's just hook this up. Out color. So this is now multi uh, addition. So let's just do a range. Connect these two guys up like that. And then we can just re reduce the overall value for this. So if I hook this up to my ID slot, we should see the range result. So what we can do now is just reduce it by quite a bit. So output min is minus one. And now we can just, um, just clamp those values, I guess. So just maybe go maybe 0.2 and negative 
uh, negative 0.2 so now we're just swapping the range and if we plus this now we should get an interesting result i think it will be way too strong but let's just see how that looks if i just connect the red output to the displacement it should explode i think we'll see and yes as expected it did explode a bit but it's fine we can just now obviously play with the range so maybe go in the, in the range from 05 negative 05 to positive 05 to positive 05 and let's just see what we get now and this is now something which is uh, working a lot better we might still reduce it a bit but I think this is kind of working and we get like a interesting look for this wafer it's not the same as the reference but it's close enough and I think I just showed you a technique how to get something out very quick and yeah nothing too special about this we can see we get these black spots that's because the scattering is a bit too aggressive on this so we can just uh, reduce our radius and we should get rid of these uh, black spots a bit make it overall a lot darker and then change play a play a bit with the roughness maybe try three for this the IOR five, five, uh, four, five, so it's not that shiny. And now we have a little setup for that wave wafer as well. So in, in contrast to the ice cream, it now has a nice little uh, contrast. So let's head over to our little chocolate thing at the bottom here, move our, our view window down there, select it, um, assign a new shader to this, and just make this maybe a chocolatey electric so no scatter for this guy base color on one um, choose this brown chocolate tone we go a bit darker for this maybe something like that and now you can already see that we get the nice reflections on this and it kind of looks like a just like a dry chocolate or like a brown sauce or whatever so good enough for this I'm, I'm sure that's fine so now let's move on that little uh, plate which is which is supposed to look like something more like that. Uh, oops, that's a banana, like this. So we can do some noise texture on this. And I think we should get something fairly reasonable. Assign favorite shader, standard surface shader. Frame that guy. And directly what we do is just create a noise pattern. AI noise. Hook that up into our base color. And do an isolate selected on this. And maybe add more detail, maybe three and distort that and I can see we get these nice lines maybe try two octaves instead and change our color to be more in that kind of blue color or these, this desaturated gray stone or whatever and do a variation on the other one maybe we go a bit darker a lot more set desaturated something like that might work I think and just desaturated the color one a bit more like that and let's see how that looks now it's a lot darker than expected but i think yeah let's just boost these colors a slightly so we get just more color in this and we will be using the same map as a bump map as well so um, or we can actually duplicate this it makes more sense to just duplicate this no noise pattern but just keep the same settings and just desaturate those values completely so we just get a clean black and white map and then we want to just boost those uh, octaves maybe to six so we get a lot more higher frequency in this create a bump to d ai bump to d node hook up the color like that hook this up into our normal camera and see what we get if i do isolate selected from here um, we should actually see some breakup if we boost our bump a bit can slow, sl slowly see that there is some breakup going on. Check the displacement. Now you can see there's definitely some breakup happening on the surface, which might be a bit strong. So maybe just try 0.1. And then we want uh, the same map as our roughness map. So I just create a tab AI range node, connect my out color to that. And the output red goes into uh, specular roughness and if i want to view that mo uh, that node we can clamp those values a bit so we want to have a bit more uh, shiny uh, parts and a lot rougher parts as well 
something like that. So we get a nice contrasty map. You can also play around with a gamma uh, node instead. But now you should be able to see that we get a good response of shiny and not so shiny surface. As you can see now here in the bottom, it's super rough. Uh, but then again, we get more shiny uh, surfaces. Overall, I think this is too rough. So we can just reduce our output max to maybe 0.5. And now we should get a lot shinier result which is more something how that like this stone platter should be actually. You can see uh, the reflection still of the cake in here, but it's a lot more broken up. So now this is kind of our base look, I think. And you can see I, I haven't restarted GPU. I didn't do anything really, and it just seems to work perfectly. It's amazing how fast and smooth everything works. So next up is the cake, the top part of it. And let's just bring in the map for that. If I, I, I guess it's this one. Okay, copy, we'll see. Uh, create, is that the new shader? No, we just need to create a new shader for this. Standard surface, hook these guys up maybe into the ID slot for now. And now let's just visualize that with isolate selected on. And I think, uh, well, it's hard to judge anything right now. We can't, we don't have the pixels. We don't have exposure. I think I'm not even sure if this exposure will work. Oh, this works actually. So you can boost the viewport exposure and the map should be uh, behaving accordingly. So that's great. Anyway, so let's uh, select that, disable the the debug shading, select the cake again, subdivide that four times like we did in ZBrush. It takes a bit of time to to update, but now we have a um, subdivision by four to create a displacement shader and hook up the red channel to the displacement and the output goes into the displacement shader. Now we should get something so you see it crash kind of uh, like the 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 surface uh, just disappeared. So let's just do a refresh here. Takes a bit of time, but now you can see we're back in action. And if I view the basic mode, you can see now we got lots of little surface breakups just because we have this displacement map from ZBrush. You can see I didn't spend too much time on it, but it will do um, Oh, we will get the result what we want to from this map. So back to the shader. You can see a bit la lazy naming things, but that's a f all right for the, the presentation here. So we want a scattery shader and we want to, um, you can see in a, diff a few different ones that there is some scattering going on. You can see now this top edge here is like scattery, but the rest is super diffuse. So what we can do is uh, do the same thing. Go to the scatter part, enable this fully on random walk two, and maybe just go down on the scale to 0 0.05 like that. So it's almost a diffuse surface. Change our base color to this dark chocolatey tone, something like, like that. We can actually go a bit more desaturated and then go a slightly bit darker. And the darker you go, the less scattering you will see actually that's typical normal behavior. So let's just move our window a bit over to that thinner part and maybe view it from the back side actually, because our light sources are uh, there and there. So if I m move my view or we'll render the window, window right there, you can now still see that we get some scattering going on. You can see the white coming through. And if I change the color to be maybe red, you should see it a bit more apparent that there is some something coming through that thick object. So obviously we don't want to go for red. We want to go to a um, to a more brownish color. This is going. Yeah, I think this can actually work pretty well. And if you want to boost that, you can first of all make sure your value is set to one. So and yeah, well, that's too much. You can see now it looks like a toffee. It's way too much. And so if that's the case, just reduce it until you're satisfied with the depth of that. And just desaturate it even more, maybe half of what I had. Go a bit more in that color space. 
And I think we can even go a bit lower in this. So now we only see the top part coming through and the rest of the cake is very diffuse actually, which is, which is correct. And then the next part would be to break up our um, roughness and also our bump. So what I like to do, I like the cell noise pattern. So let's just create another AI cell noise. Do the same as we did before. Create an AI bump to D, hook these guys up. Color goes in here. And then we connect that to the uh, normal camera and isolate the cell noise like that. Change it to Wally. I like it because it's like little spheres create um, or add higher octaves levels to this and maybe frequency to 10 like that. So we get a really fine detailed breakup here. And just we can have a look at the normals actually. And if I boost these up now, maybe 2.1. Oh, that's just geometry normals. I mean, uh, let's head back to isolate selected and select the node and you can see now the result of this so on zero it's very very smooth actually like we had in the surface normals and then you can see if i slowly bring it up how the surface gets broken up back to this uh, normal mode and you can see now this breakup is very strong but i think it might just work because the cake as well um, has just this this rough surface actually if i find it um, yeah, you can see now there is this breakup going on. Maybe I'm just a bit too aggressive on this, but what I like to do is just create an AI range in between all this, hook, hook this up instead, and then the out color goes to the bump map. And what I can do now, I can clamp those values. So we get actually kind of holes going in instead of going into both directions. So to do that, all you got to do is cap the out max, maybe at 0.6 or something. And now you can already see that, if I zoom in here, you should be able to see that we get like very flat spaces and then we get these little holes. So 0.6 is a bit too much, so maybe try 0.8. So just that we are cutting off the tips of these little, these bumps. And this is now what I wanted to go for. You can see that it's a very clean cut, but we still get this detail. And now what I wanna do is use that, just create another range, AI range, which hooks up from the existing range like that. And this one will control our specular roughness. So hooking that up to, to the spec roughness and do an isolate on this. We can now see that whatever is white is very rough. And this is what we want. We just don't want it that extreme. So we want the highest, maybe highest roughness to be maybe 0.4 and the lowest maybe 0.05. So now we are just adjusting our range. Um, we can, well, let's just first see what we get actually. So it's overall rough, but then we get these more shiny parts. I think this is actually very good already. And if we have a look at the top section here, also that breakup is very nice. And I think that just works. So let's just remove our our window viewer there and let's just let it let it resolve for a bit so ain't that pretty so we see we get actually the the way for working we just need to work on the bottom piece and i think then uh i think we get to go actually so let's just select the bottom part right click assign new material frame that selection and let's just do the same steps as we did before uh bring in our displacement which might be the base, I hope that's that one. And let's just hook this up to the ID, do an isolate selected on that and maybe go up on our exposure. And I think it looks like it's the one we'll see when once we apply the displacement. So select that guy and go to the Arnold shapes, change the mode to Cat Clark and maybe just do three subdivs on this and have a look if it's still there. We just need to hook it up to our displacement shader. Color goes there and we just hook our output to the displacement mode, uh, displacement port I mean. And yeah, we can see we get this little breakup happening. And what I wanna do now is um, let's just automatically or just directly create a new 
AI noise this time and hook that up as well to the ID slot and just view this, which looks right now like that. So what I would just want to try if, what if I do a, put in a negative number in here, maybe minus 0.05. Okay, negative doesn't work. So we actually need to work with AI range. So let's just increase our octaves to four, maybe just do a little region for the bottom part there and scale it up maybe by 10 and add some distortion. Very cool. And this will be at, uh, combined with that displacement map. So let's just do an AI range and just move the range from zero to one to a uh, negative to positive range. So right now we are zero one. And what I want to do instead is go from minus O five to O point O five. And now we can just, we might even go a bit smaller, maybe O two. And we just do what we did before AI add, just add these two values together. like that. Oops. The color goes into the ad. Let's just see the result. We shouldn't see much because we are also working in that negative space now. But you can see now we have a lot more detail in here. And if this is now my new map, let's just hook up the red channel to the displacement, go to the basic mode and just see if it actually broken up it, it a bit more. And we can now see we have very nice detail. It should be like a crust surface so this is kind of working already go back to the um, shaded mode and we want it to be scattery too so also no base we go directly to scattering enable this full on change our color to let's just pick something in here and just desaturate it a lot and go a bit lighter and our scale goes down to 0.025 maybe really low value and we want a similar color for the the trend uh, the radius color. Let's just see what we get now. Okay, it, it looks very brownish. We want to go into a more, uh, let's see if we have a nice reference here. I think on the top, we want to go something more like that. You can see actually how far it's, the light is coming through. So it's at least half a centimeter where the light is passing through this guy. So if I move this, um, our little region up here and just try to change or get to that same color. We want to go more yellowish, less green, more lighter color. I think that is getting pretty close and then we want a lighter radius. So the color which comes through should be a bit more on the yellow side like that. I think that's, that's fair enough and good enough for the crust and you can do the same with that clipping if you want um, just to get a like a cleaner cut but I think you get the idea of what it's supposed to look and obviously you, you need to change or adjust the, r the roughness a, a bit um, if you want a rougher crust which I think is makes sense maybe try 0.4 and something like that and maybe what we can do now is just try to find a nice frame Something like that is interesting. And maybe remove our resolution gate. And see what we get now. And just let it resolve for a bit. Yeah, so I think this, this works very well. If you, if you think the roughness is too strong, obviously you can just alter that. But I think for this demo, it's working very well. Uh, what we didn't do still is add our little mint leaves. And I just want to do that fairly quick now. So, um, I will just stop the render right now and just save this camera angle by clicking on, I think uh, this little bookmark here, if I right click, I can always go back. So if I move it, I can just right click and I'm back to that view. So for that little mint leaf, um, which, where is it? Which looks, uh, which is already UV. So we should be fine in that. It's in resources, which looks like this little opacity here. So all I got to do is actually just create a plane, uh, create 
polyplane like that, move it somewhere around here, and then we can just scale it a bit like that. We can then add some modifiers if we need to. Um, just make sure you're on edge mode and maybe we want to view it quickly. And I'm not sure exactly the orientation. So what we first want to do is assign the new shader to this. Go to our base. Oh, let's actually go directly to scatter. We want it to be translucent. So in the geometry tab, I make it thin walled. So it's expecting a thin, a thin material, which is because it's just single sided. Subsurface way to maybe one, the color would be our file in node. We will browse to that directory, which should be not there. So I'm just selecting the base color and let's just visualize that. And that's the orientation. So that's what the orientation is currently. Let's head over to a default look. And what I want to do now is just very basic stuff, hitting B to soft select, changing the radius, moving this guy down. And you can see this is very rudimentary, nothing really too crazy going on here. I'm just kind of bending the leaf a bit. Maybe we select this whole edge here. And then maybe move this up. So it's kind of bendy and we can also rotate it just to break up the default flatness to everything. Rotate this a bit, rotate this a bit in the other direction and maybe extend these guys a bit further like that. So this is our very simple leaf. If I bring back the texture um, like that, you can see now our leaf is bendy. We can scale it down again like that. So we just have some kind of placement and I just want to put it maybe obviously now I want to move my pivot down to that location. So I can just rotate it around that axis and I can snap it to my to the ice ice cream there. Yeah, so this would kind of be the one leaf and I think we should need to um, it should bend actually in the other direction. So what I can do now is just um, select this whole line and this one here, move it down. Obviously I'm really distorting the leaf now, but I think that's how they curl and warp these leaves. So that's one leaf. I can now just duplicate that, um, rotate it in world axis like that, maybe move it up. We will get into sections for sure. Uh, but that's not really the part or the idea of this video. Uh, just to one more, rotate this in this direction. And move it slightly over. I guess this is all I want to do for now. And now in the hyper shade, we need to assign the rest of those textures. So let's just frame this guy. So we have the base color. We still want to get opacity, translucency, and bump. So I'm just dragging these in. Why doesn't that work? So I just drag these guys in and now we just want to connect these guys up and let's see what we get. So opacity obviously would go into the um, opacity slot the translucency would go into the scatter radius and the bump would need to get a bump map, a bump to D slot like that, hook up the color, connect that to normal. And what I like to do, which we can test is just uh, create a displacement shader as well. And just, hook up the bump to that displacement and connect the displacement to that. And maybe just for the, for now, just disable the bump in general, hit save. And let's just, uh, first, before we start it, let's just subdivide those surfaces a bit. So go to subdivision, cat clock, and maybe three subdivs for all these three leaves. 
like that hit save and let's just start the render and this time I will be working in the Arnold render view just because I can swap around things so I hit play and see what we get and we can see a really distorted leaf and obviously we would need to tweak our displacement shader on this guy so let's just uh, reduce the height maybe by quite a lot and just see what we get so displacement shader and just reduce it by a lot maybe just uh, 0 0.05 and switch our mode maybe first do um, resolution maybe 50% go one to one and just re uh, render that region and change our mode to basic and we can now see that we actually get some nice displacement happening which is cool so we can if we want we can boost it but i think on, on 0.05 it's good enough and let's just go back to the shaded mode and see how we can work with these leaves now so right now we have subsurface look to this the weight is on uh, 0.1 so what we can do for the translucency because it's super translucent we can just change the overall intensity so we can just um, go to if, uh, to color balance and just uh, de um, default gain it down so we should not get a strong translucency anymore and now let's just rotate around those leaves and see how it behaves in general when we see some specular hits on it Overall, I think it's working very well. So we might just play around with the roughness of this. And then we can just go back to our original view and see what we get. If I right click our camera icon, our bookmarks icon, we can swap to the camera view, which we selected. And we hardly see those leaves, but I think it's, it's good anyway. So, um, a cool thing what we can do now is just try to to add a few beauty lights to all of this or maybe actually rotate our main light uh, slightly towards um, more backlit just to get some shaping now you can see the leaves working very well and you get this reflection there which is cool so um, let's just maybe uh, move this render view down here and create a new perspective camera like that what we can do now is just create some lights Arnold area light and maybe move this guy up here and you can now see I will do some minor lighting things and if you want to make it visible there is now the visibility slider point one here I put the camera to one and you can see the light is now uh, visible which is very cool so what we can do now is just boost the exposure place it so maybe try six so we get some nice light going on here can see now the translucency through the waver wafer and the leaves so move it up maybe and just place it however you feel fit we can have smaller light sources for crisper shadows we can also change our spread to maybe 0.3 to get a more like a spotlighty look and what else can we do we can make it a bit rounder and a soft edge if i view it now we should see a softer, like kind of a softbox look to it. I'm actually not sure if that's, this is showing. Doesn't look like it's really displaying though, but it's if you render this, um, it's actually a softer, rounder shape to the roundness to all of this. Um, all right, so what we can do then is just play maybe with light colors and placements a bit. So let's say we want a more uh, like a warmer light source from the top, maybe something orangey looking just to get some shaping to this. Nothing really special, but just playing around a bit. So one more light. Let's do an area light. Uh, we want it from kind of that direction. Boost it up maybe to eight. So we get some light. You can now see the scattering appearing just because we have this light source and boosting this. Move the light down, spread down to at least half, maybe 0 
it's more direction directional now we can actually do also look through selected like that so now we live in inside that light we can move it maybe slightly better something like that if you don't like the soft shadows you can fairly easy just change the scale of that light um, just by scaling it down and you should see now if I just region render this bottom section and I ch change the scale you can see the shadow getting crisper and crisper which is cool and now you can see how the scattering works on that so if you feel that this is this is too strong go back to the shader first of all reduce the saturation of this like that and then obviously the radius feels too strong maybe really slight sl something like that I think this works a lot better. Um, the wafer, uh, the, the the base of the cake works great. I like that transition. And one last thing I want to do is maybe add a light to catch just a few more highlights on the left. And I think this one was reflecting too strong on that surface there. So let's just reduce that exposure. We should still get something on the cake though. So maybe move it down like that. Think that's cool if it's now visible let's just hide it from the view so it's invisible and now just one last light source to just get something on that water move that back a bit create one last light area light move it somewhere here and boost it up to eight and now you see we already get some highlights on the side of the cake so a, a, a good thing is just to look through it and roughly place it you can also view it and then you can see now it's on that side here you can move it back until you get it where you want it to be i think it should be somewhere here so we catch more of this lighting on the side of it just to visualize the like how soft and smushy the cake is or supposed so supposed to be and then obviously you can i always like to keep a smaller roughness a smaller size of lights just to get crisper shadows you can play with the spread again maybe 0.5 and if this time i want to have a more blue color you can use color temperature as well boost that up and now we get a blue light here and one last thing which helps to sell realism is obviously depth of field because we are on a macro or a close-up shot we just want to make sure that we respect the depth of field so um, all you got to do is select your camera which is in this case perspective one go to the Arnold tab enable um, depth of field at the bottom here uh, change your focus distance and aperture aperture maybe to one and now you can see everything is really out of focus you can go to, to the basic mode to quickly dial in the distance um, and you can see if I just move that how really how fast it is to hit a nice focus point and uh, let's just um, obviously aperture of one is very crazy uh, but you can see how really fast this resolves it's a treat to work like that honestly so let's just uh, reduce the aperture size to get a less shallow depth of field I think this works so let's render that whole thing you can see the top is out of focus the cake is in focus what i still want to do though what i forgot to do is set up our focal length and i like 35 is a bit too 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 distorted so i like to go maybe up to 75 and for that we would need to go back in our camera so perspective one just go slightly back and until we're happy with the framing go back a bit more and just lock that as our new position and now we would need to readjust our focus obviously because we move back so just increasing the focus distance until we have something which is nice and crisp in focus i want to focus on that eye section so let's just do 100 percent and focus it until you see it crisp I think that's fairly good full frame hit F to frame it so now shallow depth of field in the front really crispy here and I'll be back uh, with a completed render 
Uh, while it's resolving, I changed my A samples to 50 for um, the GPU. So it's 5111, everything on one. And I added a RGBA AOV. And in that AOV, I just checked, uh, checked the box denoise with optics. So now I actually have a denoise version of this. And you can already see how uh, at the current state, how the denoiser works. It's, uh, it's still obviously refining it. But you can see it's already denoised after like just a few seconds and the beauty is still cooking so it will get cleaner and cleaner and so will the um, the denoised version so i'll be back once it's resolved so i think this is now more or less around five minutes uh, resolving time and it's still fairly noisy and not really usable i would say in production but that's why it's still in beta obviously good render times are between i'm not sure like 10 or 60 minutes or something like that. The denoise version looks cleaner for sure and it, it's workable. So unless in the front where it's a bit out of focus, it's not perfect, but it is definitely good for interactive lighting shading. And I think that's right now the main idea. Use GPU to quickly get something going for a good look, good shading and a good interactive experience, but still render the whole thing on the CPU. Or that's my current understanding and that's how I would currently use it. So if I just hit stop now and I'll just save that image down to disk. Uh, save multilayer EXR and I'll just save it to the location which is somewhere here. Images and uh, let's just do a cake M2A524 GPU.EXR and then we do just as a quick test the same with CPU. And all we got to do is change the settings. Go here, change the mode to CPU. Don't have 50 AA for that. Maybe try. Uh, we can try to use adaptive actually. So let's just do a minimum of three. Enable the adaptive and maybe go up till 16. And before we hit render, just render that little section here and I'm just changing my CPU quickly to 39 to get just a fast turnaround bucket size maybe 16 and let's just hit save and just update scene so now it's rendering on the CPU and I enabled progressive rendering so it's progressive adaptive so this is our current status and it's up on 30% now and it does do the same job. So if I just uh, first go to the basic mode and maybe just, just let's just disable progressive for now. So we just get the final render image and maybe let's just uh, focus to a region around here, which is now in focus. And let's just render that and see what we get. Now we can still see we get some noise, especially in the scattery parts, but all in all, it's fairly clean and very fast and, uh, for the final step. And we still have the denoise section. Once um, the beauty is it's done rendering, we should get a denoise version too. Let's just see once that is done. Like that, let's just check the denoise one. And that is super clean now, just because we clean up all the little sample noise. We don't have the nice spec though because the, the basic one just calls out values higher than one. So that's not really helpful. But let me just um, increase our settings. So let's just reduce the threshold, maybe half of that 0.25. And if I just store this image before we change it, let's just see um, if we get rid of a bit more of this noise. And especially in this area here, I'm looking there. So before and after, you can see now we get rid of even more of this noise. If I zoom in a bit, you can see it's a bit more apparent. And let's just see in that shadow area, once we see the buckets cleaning up there, we are right now cleaned halfway through, I think. Slowly moving down in the shadow area, you can see the buckets cleaning up there. I keep switching, but you can see how the noise gets gets cleaned up super cool though i think they also uh, um 
spend more time on the adaptive sampling to get that working even better. And yeah, I must say they, that this 3.2 release and with the new Arnold Core 5. Point, what is it? 5.3, I think. Very great, and it's just a treat to work with Arnold now. It's super efficient. So I, I will just render the CPU full image, and then I'll be back. All right, so that is the final render after mere five minutes of render time. Um, we have a pretty clean image. If I check the denoised version, uh, obviously we get no highlights, but it is super clean. So you can use the um, offline denoiser, and it will all be very nice. So let me just save this out to disk. And then I, w I just want to give my last uh, remarks on this. And I got to say, it's it's coming a long way. It's really fun to work um, with that now. It's, uh, it's, it's just really um, intuitive. You can just work. You can plug displacements, plug in bumps, do isolate modes on the GPU. And everything works super crisp and super smooth. And it's just a very refreshing way of working. And for final renders, I would not suggest using this just because as you've seen, it takes a while to resolve and you will always get these little fireflies in high spec areas or high sampled areas. So play in the GPU, work on that interactively. But once you are happy to render a sequence or render to disk, I would recommend using the CPU version instead. It's not a, it's not a bad thing. It's still good. And the Beauty, beauty of all this is you can easily just swap between GPU and CPU and get the same results. So that's very nice. And well, I hope you enjoyed this hands-on video. And as I said before, um, if you want to join or follow along, it's all on Patreon. I really appreci appreciate your support on that platform. And also obviously on YouTube, it's really helping me to keep content, uh, creating content and just moving forward. I really enjoy reading all the comments and I, I just appreciate all the all the nice feedback I'm getting from you guys. So thank you guys for watching this uh, tutorial and I will see you in the next one.